Okay. Um, well, thank you very much, Matthew, for inviting me along to share our journey um, at St. John's in Mossley Common. So um, just to introduce the project, um, it's called the WWW Community Garden Project or uh, Woodland Wildlife and Wellbeing Garden. Um, and it's been quite a journey. <laughs> So uh, just a bit of introduction from me. I'm an ALM at St. John's Church, and I'm also um, now the eco lead for the Lee Mission community. Um, and we've set um, net zero as one of our prior priorities in our mission community. So um, for me, that's been really important, just making sure that we've got a team of people where we can work together. Uh, and one of my other hats that I wear is I'm actually a volunteer garden tour guide at RHS Bridgewater, which um, really ties together my um, interest in things horticultural, but um, also they've got a massive emphasis in community engagement, which is what's helped drive our particular project. So just want to take you on a journey, really, with um, how we got started on this project, um, the vision that developed for this, and then talk a little bit about the planning and some of the uh, things that we've dealt with as we've gone on this journey, and how we've engaged people, including our PCC, um, various funders, and the community at large, and where we're heading. So um, if you've got any questions, if you, um, uh, there'll be time for that at the end. So hopefully we'll uh, be able to answer those questions. So just want to look at where it all started. Um, and it's worth just giving you some idea of where we're located. Um, we're actually on the northwest side of Manchester, um, very close to the new guided busway. That we uh, that was built a few years ago, and um, the village itself was once the home of one of the largest show pit collieries in the UK. Um, massive employer in the area during the fifties and sixties, but the village is now rapidly becoming um, what's known as a commuter belt suburb, um, and with the new transport links, um, that's very key. So. Just a bit of background to where we are, as you can see from what's on screen at the moment, um, we did have, <laughs> we were surrounded at the back of church by a lot of fields. And this is a map um, from uh, earlier, um, from about the 1960s. Um, but gradually, of certainly over the last few years, we've seen a huge amount of development. Um, and there's been mutterings about building these houses for around 30 years. But over the last five years, uh, the landowners have got their way and the fields and lanes and hedges that I enjoyed as a child um, have disappeared uh, under all these homes. And um, although personally I mourn the loss of all that green space, it provided the church with a huge opportunity um, for uh, mission. And it meant with all these new homes, we've got around 800 new families moving into the area. So that's been a tremendous uh, change in the structure and population of the village. And most of this green now has disappeared under those houses, unfortunately. But um, we had a problem in looking at how potentially we could um, link with these houses um, and we wanted to maximize the visibility and access to the church and our vicar at the time and uh, this is probably about uh, a few years ago now um, four years ago um, worked with the council and the house builders to do two things and that was to basically um, ask them not to build at the back of church so you can see on the picture here that we've managed to leave a field at the back of church without houses on. But we also asked them to build a path 
uh, from the new estate down to our boundary. Now, at that point, there was nothing in place on the other side of that boundary. It was just basically overgrown land. Um, so there wasn't a lot to sell this path to the developers at the time. Um, but after prayer and a lot of negotiation, they agreed. So miracles do happen if you're persistent. Um, and then we started to develop a vision for the project. You know, where were we going to take this? Now we got the path in, um, what was going to happen with that? So we started to look at potentially what we could do. Now, our vicar um, at the time decided to move to a new parish and he handed the project to me. So that was um, very interesting. So how do we get um, a path through our church land and what should we do with that? So you can see on the top left there, we've got the new path in place, but not a lot of el not a lot else. And we knew that the residents of the new houses would want to get to the main road um, because there was a new retail development being built opposite, but we had absolutely no money. But we did have a vision for what we wanted to try and start to do. So we cleared a very rudimentary path through the land just to see if people would actually use it. And this is back in June 2019. Um, we took down the rusty barbed wire fence just to see if this crazy idea of ours might work. And at the far end of the uh, path, we had a rusty old gate that hadn't been open for 30 years, uh, which meant they had to walk around the front of church at the time. Um, but we were astonished at the amount of footfall that this route carried. But it was very clear that as the winter months came, that we needed to do something more permanent in terms of a path. Um, and in the end, it was a member of the public who actually opened the gate, got the gate open, um, so that the pathway through um, was much more usable. So... We slowly began to realise that we need to do some development on this space. It's got a lot of mature trees. It's got a lovely babbling brook on the north side of its uh, of the border. And given that we were losing so much green space around us, we thought, what better than to create a woodland, wildlife and wellbeing garden? Um, and we realised that the retail park opposite was actually going to have a new health centre on it. Um, which again boosted our um, idea of developing this this land and you can see there the gate um, before it was opened so it's not all been plain sailing so some of the first problems that we had was the fact that although the path um, was well used it also attracted a lot of bored um, teenagers and um, because it was quite secluded and they'd always use the area, but we had an, a series of incidents. So in uh, February 2020, the cellar door was kicked off and all the paint that was in there was thrown all over the um, church drive, walls. So that wasn't great. And then we had a series of um, attacks on the windows down the north side. So... The PCC were understandably not very happy about this, but the church rallied round and an amazing member of our church paid for the polycarbonate sheeting to be put on all the low level windows to provide the protection. We had the windows replaced and that was partly funded because the community stepped up to support us with a crowdfunding page to help us with the window repairs. And that was an amazing answer to prayer. But it also provided a fantastic link for us to work together with the community. Uh, and we're about to have CCTV fitted to that side of church, thanks to other donations that people have put in place. So where did we go with the path? Well, obviously, by March 2020, um, we then hit COVID and the whole thing ground to a halt, although people were using the path for their daily walks and the exercise. Now, one of the things that we wanted to do, because we had no money, we were wondering how on earth we were going to get this path put in. 
and unfortunately one of the local councillors attends our church he started to speak to the developers of the retail park opposite and um the council actually drew the plans up for us for the path and amazingly the developer agreed to lay the new path for free that was once we got the faculty in place um for permissible access um from the diocese and so eventually all were fitted together and we got the path put in there um and the first project we did with the community was um invite them to help us plant um hundreds of daffodil bulbs down either side of the pathway so that now forms a beautiful ribbon of yellow in spring uh, and it really got the uh people the young people and families engaged with the project so where did we need to go with this well obviously covid halted a lot of plans for people um but because people began to value nature and the great outdoors during that hour of exercise that we uh, that we could take we realized that actually this was this well-being aspect was a really good thing to expand on. So we started by putting a plan together and we developed that with the PCC. And we looked at those three aspects that we talked about. So the woodland, we got mature trees. Uh, we did just some work doing on the trees. So um, as part of this planning, we started, we finished up having some of the trees felled because they were diseased and the PCC funded that because it had to be done. Um, but we also started talking to people about what they'd like to see in terms of wildlife and well-being. So out of that, we created a document and we created a benefits case. Now, if you're going to do anything that, that you're going to apply for funding for, You've got to have uh, a benefits case in place. So if you're going to work with anything like the um, any community groups, um, the RHS, the council and the diocese, they want to be able to see what benefit you're bringing to um, the local community. So we gathered some ideas, created mood boards, so things like wildflower meadows, incredible edibles, um, hives potentially, bug hotels. We looked at what lighting we might need. Um, we obviously wanted the woodland pathway in there. We looked at ideas around fitness trails, um, the beeline bike cycle network that's supposed to be going into Greater Manchester. That's sort of on our list further down. Um, water capture for watering um, and uh, composting. So those, those are the ideas that were brought forward. So we put together a schedule of works and potential costs um, for, for doing those things. They were all very high level. But the key thing was um, faculties that we needed um, because it is church ground. So we got in touch with the, um, the diocese to check about land ownership and um, also we put together a list of um, potential funding sources. Now there's lots of funding out there. You'd be surprised. Um, fortunately, one of our team churches, we've got a great guy called Ian, who's really good at getting money out of councils and various community groups. So he really helped us in looking at what potentially we could use. And we've also just had um, the okay to from the Woodland Trust, they're going to give us 60 hedging saplings. Um, so we're going to work with our local school and their eco group in March in planting a new hedge. Um, but you do need to check with the diocese about what permissions you need um, before you start. So once we got that in place, I just wanted to share really where we're going with this overall. So this will form part of our um eco church um and working towards our bronze so um surprisingly we've not registered as yet we're about to do that this weekend uh, so we're going to be registering with um 
Eco Church to make sure that we um, use this project along with the other things that we're doing at uh, St. John's to uh, allow us to be able to move towards that bronze award. We've said we're going to install the CCTV. That's both for the building security, but also um, for looking after people who are using that pathway. The hedging will be going in with help of the uh, local church school. We're going to put a wildflower meadow at the back of church. At the moment, that's just overrun with bramble. So we're going to be clearing that and putting that in there. And we're going to look at how we can better engage with the community um, and youth. Um, and we're going to do use our social media platform to be able to do that and also apply for funding for those key elements that we want to put in. And then part of phase two, we want to um, perhaps talk to the council and the Greater Manchester Authority about these uh, bike cycle racks to encourage people to um, use those. Um, look at the lighting provision. Um, we've already had the council down looking at a solar solution for us. Um, we're going to put some compost bins in. We've had interest from a local beekeeper about wanting to put some hives in. And ultimately, we want to provide access to the church, to the mit, to the uh, entrance at the back through a lockable gate. And then how we use that land, maybe for forest uh, church. And also we've uh, looked at using the back of the land at the back of church for a summer picnics praise um, afternoon where people can come have a picnic and we'll have um, a very simple opener service. So that's where we're up to with um, the project at the moment. If anybody's got any questions, I am more than happy to uh, try and answer them for you.